been talking about uh, input state linearization. So we consider the systems on this form. G of x times u, and we said that this system is input state linearizable if and only if two conditions, one I may swap the order, it doesn't matter. One was the linear controllability, so uh, the span or the rank of the rank of this guy, G, uh, you know what I will have to swap the order. So this is delta the span of G, FG, and so on until F n minus 2 G. This was this was what? Should what? Should be what? Involutive. Involutive. Is involutive. And if we have the, the span of all these guys again, fg, but this time until add fg n minus 1, this should be the entire array, right? The point is, this condition of linear controllability actually practically is satisfied for most of the systems. This guy, however, is uh, too stringent. So uh, it's not commonly satisfied by the limited systems. It would be great if it was because uh, we would be able to linearize our dynamic systems, exactly linearize. But unfortunately, this property is not always satisfied most of the time. So if not, what do we do? Well, there are alternative ways to do linearization. We will give up the, the notion of exact linearization for the entire state space. So uh, one option is to do something, is to do embedding. Not, uh, not, a, you know, not a transformation, embedding, uh, so I'm saying not a diffeomorphism. We were looking for a transformation. <coughs> so a transformation, you can uh, differentiate it forward. There is an inverse, and you can differentiate it backwards, so it's a diffeomorphism. So uh, we will give up this. So uh, we have an n-state system. We hope to embed it in a larger system, but in a linear form. For example, if you have this nonlinear differential equation, it's scalar. This is ax squared 2bx c plus u here. I can define this dynamical system, linear, z1 dot z2 dot. This is negative A, negative B, so this is B and C, Z1 and Z2, and it's actually bilinear, so this is Z2 times U. Now if you define your X to be just Z1 divided by Z2, you will recover this dynamics exactly, okay? So X dot is, you know, Z2, Z1 dot minus blah, blah. But there is no way to get the z's out of the x's, right? Because you are, well, if you have x, you have infinitely many things to get z1, z1 and z2. If you have the z1 and z2, you can get the x. So we can do these kind of things to, uh, you know, now I have a linear dynamical system. It's bilinear in this case, but let's focus on the linearity. So we have a linear dynamical system. We can do analysis. We can do many things. And then I can recover my x, but I cannot hope for control here because uh, this version might not be even controllable. You were evolving on n dimensional, say, say four dimensional, and you're giving me okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna give you a tenth dimensional system where it's linear. Your dynamics will look like linear, 
Yes, but don't expect me to have the ability to control these 10 states. They are more states, so I may not be able to control them. So uh, what you get here might not be a controllable system. So it, it, it's, it may not be good for control purposes, but it's definitely good for analysis. I'll give you another idea, for example, in this regard, regarding the embedding, not a diffeomorphism. So uh, consider this system, for example, x1 dot is like ax1, x2 dot is like b x2 minus x1 squared. Okay? So the system is mostly linear, but I have a nonlinear term in it. Whenever we have a nonlinear term, I can go and define it as a new state, x3. Okay? Obviously, this is not an independent state. Okay? So that's why we're looking for an embedding, it's not a diffeomorphism. But I will call it just x3. Okay, and I can say here is x3 dot, which is 2x1, x1 dot, right? x1 dot is ax1. So this is 2a x1 squared. And x1 squared, like I just said, is just x3. So in the new state space, this is just a linear system, like a0, 0, 0 and 0b, negative b, 0, 0, 2, a, in the states x1, x2, x3, right? Of course, this example is contrived, and uh, here we, we made it to, we're lucky here that, you know, just defining a new state completes everything, and now you can analyze it, you can, this is an LTI, right? You can get the solution here, e to the at, and uh, from which you can recover your nonlinear system. That, that's, that's very good. But again, you cannot vote for controllability because here you're evolving on a higher dimensional system, so you may not be controlled. The point is, uh, when can I always do that? Like, let's, let's add one more state. Let's add, say, here. Let's add CX2. Okay. And the first equation, which is a linear term. So this will here add CX2. So it will here add 2CX1, X2. Again, it's a nonlinear term, right? So I'm going to collect it and say this is X4. And I'm going to write an equation for X4 dot. Yada, yada, okay? There will be more nonlinear terms here. You can collect them and add new states, and so on and so we are sure that if you go to infinity, the system will be linear. Yes, so there is the Kuhnman operator theory, 1931, that in a nutshell, without going into too much detail, um, it's actually not stated this way in the literature, but it is exactly this. If you have a nonlinear ODE, like the first two states or something, whatever, we're sure that you can write it as a linear, right? But you can increase the dimension. And the dimension may go to infinity. And if you have an infinite dimension system, it's called what? Infinite dimension of differential equation, it's called what? The partial differential equation, right? Okay, so uh, a nonlinear OD, can be seen as a linear system evolving an infinite dimension. So, i.e. it's a linear PD. Okay? Uh, sometimes we're lucky enough to uh, have our you know, process stuff here in a finite dimension at some space. And this actually uh, one of the efforts that I suggested in uh, the projects. This is the paper by Astolfi, CDC 2016. Sometimes we're lucky, so, uh, so it gives conditions and good instructions for how to do this and arrive at a still a finite dimensional but larger and linear system. Okay? At any rate, this branch is not what we're going to do in this course. I'm just giving you hints so that if you are very interested in these things, you can learn on your own. Here's what we're going to do today. Uh, if we cannot linearize, exactly linearize the system, because this condition is too stringent, we can hope to linearize part of the system. So here we're not interested in input state, not linearizing the full state, but input out of linearization. So 
to the linearizing part of the system. In particular, we're linearizing the relation between the input and the output. We hope that we hope to achieve a linear dynamics between the input and the output, not between the input and the full state like we did before, because we may not be able to do for many systems, but at least in, with respect to the output. So I have my system, which is x dot equals f of x plus g of x times u, it's still a scalar system, and now we are talking about an output function. This is a scalar function, okay? Maybe one of the states, or whatever you can measure, a combination of the states. So I'm going to call this system 1, because we're going to uh, consider it throughout the lecture. So I'm looking for a transformation, looking for, still it's a diffeomorphism here, it's a, it's a very legitimate transformation. And also a feedback, like last time, so this is alpha of x plus beta of x times v, where beta is non-zero, of course. So a transformation and feedback such that the system 1, or the states x, will go to two states, two sets of states, so like psi's and phi's, for example. And the dynamics of psi is completely linear. The dynamics of phi, this is the remaining dynamics that we could not linearize. So this is something, whatever it is. But it's void of the output. I'm sorry, void of the input. So this is a, an R-dimensional, R times R, R by 1. Obviously, R is this then or equal to N. And here is the remaining dynamics, N minus R times 1. So in this sense, if R equals N, it's as if we get what? If R equals N. Hmm? If R equals N, what, what do we get? Yeah, right? So this is what we had in the last lecture, which is input state linearization. So R equals N, this is input state linearization. You linearize the entire system. So this is our goal today, okay? And we will see how... Now this system is super easy to treat because it's a linear system. I can design the V to do whatever I like. And uh, I hope that if Epsilon behaves nicely, this thing will not ruin because it's, it's evolving on its own. I have no control over it, okay? And it's not in. So uh, we will see conditions for how to make sure that this does not ruin everything. So like I said, it's an input-output linearization. So we focus on the output and I'm going to just uh, you know, work with the output. I'm going to differentiate the output. So this is partial h, partial x, the Jacobian times x dot. So it's partial h, partial x. x dot is just f plus g u. Right? So the first term, partial h, partial x times f is what? This is what? Partial h, partial x times f. Hmm, come on guys. This is like week 8 or something. In differential geometry. So what is partial h, partial x times f? What's partial h, partial x times f? Not from differential geometry, from your analysis, engineering analysis. What's that? the derivative of h alone. Yeah, it's LFH, right? And this guy is LGH times U. So, uh, if this guy, the coefficient of U, LGH, is non-zero, then I can define my U to cancel the nonlinear dynamics, whatever nonlinear term is here. So, uh, because I can divide by this guy, LGH is non-zero, so it's negative LFH plus V. So this will result in Y dot equals V. Here is a linear relation between the input and output. But 
things will not be like this, and actually you don't want it to be like this, because why? Because yeah, I now I achieved a linear relation between the input and the output because it's just one state, and I have n minus one states remaining dynamics that is not linear and I have no control over, so this is not that good actually. So uh, if this guy is zero, strictly zero, so, so um, if not, which means LGH is strictly zero, then I'm going to differentiate it. So uh, here in this case, this is zero. So my output is just my output dot. Y dot is just this guy. So Y double dot is again the derivative of this guy. So LF two times H plus LG LF H times U. And again, if the coefficient of U is not zero, then I can define you to cancel this nonlinear dynamics, yada yada, because I can divide by this guy. And this will result in y double dot to be your v, right? And if not, again, so keep doing it until the r derivative, so this is dr y by dt r is lf r times plus lg lf r minus 1 times and this is times u and hopefully at some point you will get the coefficient of u is not 0 so if l g l f r minus 1 h is non zero I can choose u to cancel the nonlinear dynamics so negative l f h r plus v divided by this guy and I will use this many times so uh, I will call this control law star this results in the rth derivative right, this is the case okay. this results in the rth derivative right, to be just v okay. so I have a linear map perfect integrator like r integrators between v and, and y the remaining are non linear we will talk about them in a minute any questions so far? Any questions so far? So uh, here is how we get the epsis that we promised at the beginning. We said uh, we're going to transform my x's into a set of epsis where the dynamics is linear and some, un some nonlinear dynamics that they have no control over. So actually I can define my epsi1 to be the output, my epsi2 to be the output dot, and then epsi r to be the r minus 1 derivatives. So by construction, Epsi1 dot is Epsi2, 